Welcome to episode 16 of Armchair Donkeys. Uh, we've got our college teammate, Matt McChesney, back on the show to help make some picks today. Now, before we jump into what I believe will be a fantastic second round of the NFL playoffs, Chez, you were a former two-way NFL lineman. After your playing career, you opened 6-0 strength in Parker, Colorado, where you spend the majority of your time working with high school, college, and NFL football players. Now, when it comes to betting football, which this show is all about, uh, Chez, you're the king of the same game parlay. We know that you spend a ton of time breaking down game film with your athletes at 6-0 strength. Talk a little bit about how that helps you identify the bets for those same game parlays. So when you're looking at, I'll just use a game from this weekend. So when you're looking at a game like Kansas City Buffalo, and you can identify tendencies in both offenses, and then you can identify the weaknesses in both defenses, and you just look at the percentages of throws to guys like Tyree Kill and Travis Kelty in the red zone, and you look at the percentages of Josh Allen running the ball inside the 10, how many breakout runs Singletary has had where he's gotten caught because he, he doesn't score on his big runs. He gets caught, and then Josh Allen ends up getting the touchdown in, in their goal line packages. Or Stephon Diggs or Dawson Knox, who is an, an animal in the red zone. So – I with all the film that we watch and all the all the breakdowns that we do, it just kind of inherently happens. I mean, I, it's not something that I thought I would ever, you know, do. Sports betting is relatively new still, and I've been doing this for years. So it, it's just the tendencies and the personnel groupings and how they get to the red zone. I it's like putting money on Debo Samuel to score. Like it, it's, there's a reason it's a negative number on every betting site, but when you parlay those negative numbers together, so you can take like three weeks ago, I picked a different touchdown score in every single game on Sunday and I missed by two, by two guys. And it would have paid out like 50 G's on a hundred dollar bet. Damn. But if you take the, like, for example, you take the Buffalo Kansas city game this week and you don't just look at the over under who's going to score or who's, who's going to win. You look at the total points scored and when the defenses can't really stop each other, which is what playoff football is. They're pulling out all the bells and whistles. And then you go, okay, I'm going to parlay the top four guys together. And I'm going to go Hill, Kelsey, uh, Diggs, and Dawson Knox, or Diggs and Josh Allen. Well, those four individually are negative 150, negative 175, yada, yada, yada. But all four of them together is plus – Four thousand. And what about maybe throwing into Jarek McKinnon or some something who's probably going to get plus something on that to push that number up even higher? And, and then that's where you get fucked. That's where the big chicken gets fucked. <laughs> and myself, because I look at it and I go, "Okay, who else could we add to this?" <laughs> so then I add an extra guy to to it. I hit on the ones that were supposed to happen, and the guy I didn't. I I put on extra screws me, and I lose the parlay. So. I can't tell you how many one player short score parlays I've I've missed on, but it doesn't really matter because when you make a hundred dollar bet on a plus four, six, eight thousand dollar bet, that pays for all your fuck ups. So <laughs> it it that's the way that I look at these these playoff games with look with Kansas City Buffalo and the Rams and Tampa primarily, in my opinion, I think those two games are going to be I don't know, 30-27, 34-31. Like, they're, they're going to score points. And both teams are going to score points, and the Stars are going to eat. Gronkowski eats in the playoffs. Cooper Cup's going to eat. Odell Beckham's going to get his. He got his last week. Like, they want to showcase their stars in the playoffs. And, you know, I, I think that in those two games primarily, you're, I don't see how you can – be really nervous about the money you put down there. You just kind of, kind of put it down, pick your guys and roll. I love it, man. Uh, I'm going to give you a little quick uh, quote that uh, comes from the, the stock market world to, to kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And you're thinking about adding that extra touchdown score who may be like a plus 300 or a plus 350. It goes, bulls make money. Bears make money. Hogs get slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> And, and look, man, I, one one guy that I would definitely keep an eye on is McKinnon because he stepped in last week for Daryl Williams, and Daryl Williams screwed me 
He was white. He was my guy last week that got hurt and only had one carry. Got hurt on his first carry. Didn't play the rest of the game. And then the guy that came in for him went for like 150 total yards and two touchdowns. So that's the that's the like five thousand dollar jab right there. We're like, thank you, Daryl. <laughs> but McKinnon could go off this week. I mean, look, Buffalo's defense is number one in, in football for a reason, uh, and that reason is they play in the AFC East. I think McKinnon is actually a uh, a nice little addition to that offense since he's uh, come on. Yeah, All right. Place for Kansas City's offense is a nice one. <laughs> That's true. All right, Bob, let's jump into it. Uh, the Bengals are a three-and-a-half-point underdog in Nashville at the Titans. The over-under in this game is 47 points. Yeah, I think, you know, like like Chess said, I think we're in, a, in for a weekend of great games, um, starting with this one. You know, um, I, I, I'm a fan of Joe Burrow, the way he plays, the way he leads that team. Um, but when I look at this game – and when I look at a running back coming back and a guy like Derrick Henry, even if he's not 100 um, percent and, and the way those Titans play, especially at home, um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll share this first. Right. I don't I don't like any of these games individually this weekend, to be honest with you. Yeah, they um, I like I like teasing, um, teasing all of them. And, you know, we can hit on that in a minute. But, you know, if I was going to look at this, I think the Titans win the game. Um, I don't like giving up that extra half point. I, I think it'll be pretty close uh, within within the three and a half. But um, it'll be fun to see what Derrick Henry brings back to the table. They're saying he's supposed to start. We'll see how healthy he is, and we'll see what that how the rest of that team rallies around that guy being back. But I, I think the Titans win. But I think it, it's a tough one to make a bet on. Chess, look, I. I... Cincinnati's just got something, man. And, you know, youth, they don't know that they don't know. And Tennessee's been sitting around thinking about this for a week, and all they've been hearing is how they're a fraud number one seed and Kansas City's really the best team in the AFC or Buffalo. Uh, But Tennessee beat Kansas City and Buffalo, and they beat their ass at home, and they have all their home games at – they're the number one seed. They've, They've got all their games at home if they can find a way to win. But I will say this. Joe Burrow and Chase and Higgins and Mixon and this a collection of offensive talent they have there, if they go off, it's over. Like they, they, they go off and they're making somebody look stupid. So, yes, I agree that Tennessee probably wins the game, but I can't, I can't bet on this. I can't bet a money line. I've, I've tried like three different times. I've gone in and put this number. <laughs> like, okay, I'm about to do it. And then I hit, I'm about to hit the button and I don't do it. And it's because... Mike Vrabel has got the, those guys rolling, but at the same time, I've watched Tennessee do this dance. I've watched them pl- play in the playoffs and underachieve and lose at home. So I, I don't know. This is a tough one. I mean, if if Joe Burrow and Cincinnati can find a way to, you know, keep this magic going, they can absolutely go into Nashville and win. Uh, I uh... – agree with a lot of what both of you guys are saying. Joe Burrow is, is he's a special player, a really special player. Uh, Adam Bledsoe sent me a stat that said Mike Vrabel is 8-0 in games when he's had more than eight days to prepare. I think that uh, you'd never want to bet against the streak. Like we always talk about when you walk up to the roulette table and you say, see a bunch of blacks or a bunch of reds, it's probably not a good idea to go the other way when you've had eight hit in a row. Um, that said, the big question mark is Derrick Henry. I'm, I'm with you, Chez. I can't touch this game. Bob, I can't touch this game until I see what kind of production we're going to get out of that guy. Yeah, this you is got, an end. This is what? This is an end it, game. Like it, 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 100%. 100%. You've got to just – you got to get into the game and see like halfway through the first quarter how you feel and then go with it. You got three animals at quarterback left in the AFC. Derrick Henry is the buzzsaw that can uh, play ball control and keep those guys on the sideline if he's healthy. But, again, it's a big question mark. I'm staying away uh, this weekend from the Titans, uh, either for or against them, just to see you know what they're working with uh, and, and how healthy he actually is. Fair. All right, guys, let's go to Green Bay for the second game on Saturday. The 49ers are a five-and-a-half-point dog in Lambeau. I'm going to ask you guys a question here. What's more important, rest and health 
or momentum and identity? Momentum. You know, I, I, I agree. I think momentum's huge, especially in the playoffs. And that's, that's where I'm leaning towards a little bit in this game. The 49ers have been in dog fights in back-to-back weeks. They've established an identity in essentially what's been two playoff games um, while Green Bay's kind of just been sitting on the sidelines. The big question is, is, is did those wins come without consequences? And the answer is no. They're banged up on a short week. Nick Bosa's, uh, they said it was a, a concussion. It looked to me more like it might have been a fucking neck injury. Yeah, uh, Jimmy G's banged up, a shoulder and a, and a, a, a hand. Fred Warner got an ankle. Jordan Willis got a high ankle. Those are pieces that if this team is going to have a chance to beat Green Bay, they need. And we're not really going to know. They're going to go, right? Like, this is your season's done after this game. So we know they're going to go, but how healthy are they? That's that's the question that we're looking at here. Um, if everyone plays, I like the 49ers buying the half to plus six. I also like the idea of watching the live line in this game. I think the Packers might come out a little bit slow, having been on the, on the sidelines, really, for the last two weeks. A lot of guys didn't play uh, in week 18. Um, so if, if in this game the Niners jump out to, uh, say, a 10 or even maybe a 13 or a 14-point lead, I like taking the Packers on the live line if we see a two-score advantage for the Niners at any point in this game. I think that the Niners – probably cover uh six i think the packers will likely find a way rogers will likely find a way to win this game Ches, what are you seeing here all right so it's going to be four degrees and there's going to be 20 mile an hour winds and it's at eight o'clock at night um but i i don't see this like lackluster leader and quarterback and jimmy garoppolo like everybody else does well not everyone but 90 percent of people i see a fucking like just leader that has the respect of his teammates and plays hurt and yeah he's got something going on all the time but he comes back from it consistently and he wins playoff games and i i wonder where the niners would be without him um now all that said there are certain players in the nfl that you know when they're hurt and they come back and play you still have to – the other side, you still have to accommodate for them. And Bosa and Warner and those guys are definitely those guys. But I will say this. Instead of being like them playing the Cardinals and the Cardinals going, we've got to identify where Warner is because he's one of the best Mike linebackers and we've got to identify where Bosa is because he's one of the best speed rushers. I think the Packers are going to look at them and go, we definitely need to identify where 54 and 97 are because they're both hurt. And now we can put a target on them. And, and match up with them and make them do things that maybe they can't do because they don't feel 100%. And that, in turn, putting, you know, either one of those running backs on Warner in one-on-one when he's banged up, that's advantage offense, especially in Green Bay. So I do agree that they're going to start slow. Uh, I don't know how many games I watched from the Packers this year where they looked like absolute trash in the first half. The, I do agree with that. Bears game. <laughs> the, 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 the the first Lions game where the Lions were up on at, on them at halftime and the, the Vikings contest and so many more. I, uh, look, I, my gut says San Francisco just because of what they've been doing. And I, I watched this dance in the playoffs two years ago, but they were in Santa Clara and it was two, it was two different teams, but the, the stars are the same. So if, I know this. Nobody in Green Bay was happy to see San Francisco win. Yeah. They're, Everybody they're... wanted the Cowboys or the Rams to come up, dome team to come to weather. Nobody wants this hard-nosed 49er team to walk into to Green Bay. And if anybody's going to do it, if anybody's going to walk into Green Bay and give Aaron Rodgers another playoff loss, it's these guys because they will line up and straight beat the shit out of you. So I, uh, I think Green Bay's better. But I think the Niners are tougher, and I'm I'm taking I'm taking the Niners in Green Bay straight on money line. I like it, Bob. I don't give a damn how slow the Packers start. Okay, <laughs> number number twelve is still under center. All right, and and Bo's <laughs> being a Bo, Bo's being a hometown guy right now with his Got hat on, on and the 49ers. Listen, the 49ers beat a shitty Cowboys football team. Can we just get over the fact? They- that they were unprepared, 
Their their game their game plan was awful. Their play calling was awful for the Cowboys. Like that's not going to be the team that's standing across from them in Green Bay. Green Bay wins this game. I don't like the spread. I'm rolling this into. Well, we can talk about it later. Teasing this thing. If I can tease this thing and get points and Aaron Rodgers at home, that, listen, I get it. San Francisco, they're tough. They're physical. Number 12 still under center. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, your head's probably in the right spot, Bob, taking taking the Packers plus some points. 20-mile-an-hour um, wins. I didn't know that. That's that's going to be a factor. Um, it's four you, degrees, dog. It is cold. Yeah, and, and the winds the winds are going to be a factor. 20 miles an hour versus nothing. I mean, in Buffalo against New England, there it was cold, but there was no wind factor. Wind factor plays a, plays a pretty pretty big role when you're going to be – Throwing the ball on the Niners, like you said, Chez, they're going to try and make this game a fist fight. And if they can do that, I think they can find a way to win. Uh, George Kittle, I think something's wrong with him. He's dealing with a calf injury, which I had my um, my senior year. And he's been really a non-factor in the passing game. He looks great in the running game. And it did when I did my calf, it didn't affect my run blocking at all, but I, it, it affected my speed and find ways to, to get open you, in the passing game. Uh, blocking? Well, yeah, yeah. My, hey, I, I was more than just a cut blocker. <laughs> I was more than just a cut blocker, Chess. I'm excited for this I game. I know. I'm just buzzing your balls. It'll be, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be an awesome game. I'm excited for this game. All right, Chess, uh, take us to Kansas City, where the Chiefs are a one-and-a-half-point favorite at home against the Bills. The over-under in this game is 53-and-a-half. This is the AFC Championship game, in my opinion. Uh, it's too bad that – Neither one of them could hold up their end of the deal and be the one seed or the two seed because they are easily the best two teams in the AFC. Um, look, Mahomes is unbelievable. Last week, what he did to uh, the probably the worst playoff team I've ever fucking seen in my life, the Steelers, um, is impressive. I mean, five straight touchdown drives. You, you got to go do it still. They're still pros. They still have T.J. Watt and Cameron Hayward. They're still, they, still, I got, they got dudes on defense. Their offense is terrible. Um, and then for Buffalo to do what they did, to have the, the highest rating in office, offensive efficiency in playoff history in one game against Belichick, I mean, good God. So I think there's going to be points galore. I don't see how either one of these defenses are going to be able to slow down anybody. It's going to be about which team makes a mistake. Does Mahomes throw the pick or Josh Allen throw the pick? Does Mahomes put the ball on the ground or one of his guys or does Josh Allen put the ball on the ground? The thing that separates this is Buffalo's willingness to run the quarterback power and run quarterback counter, in my opinion, because Josh Allen is, I'm never in my life. It's like John Elway running four, six, which is nuts. So the fact that he's so versatile and he can just attack people with his feet and he he can get out of the pocket and then their, their bootlegs and their sprint out game looks just like their quarterback counter and run. I, I, it's I don't know how you're supposed to stop it if you're if you're Kansas City because nobody's tackling that guy one on one in the open field so he he's really the one that that sets this off for me I think Kansas City I, I'm not saying they're at the end of their road they're going to win the AFC West until Mahomes retires as far as I'm concerned but nobody's scared of them in the playoffs anymore I don't think people are scared of them and if you're good Tampa Bay blueprinted how to beat their ass last year now they they fixed a lot of these holes but i think that the buffalo win over new england was a tone setter for them whereas i think that the kansas city win over pittsburgh was expected and kind of easy for kansas city whereas buffalo played like it was a super bowl in that wild card game so buffalo's going to be looking at this differently for their fan base alone Kansas City just got their ring. They went to another one. If they go to three straight and they beat the Bills to do it, good for them. But if I'm part of Bills Mafia, this I've got all my chips in the center on this team because they are really good on defense. Again, they play in the AFC East. It's really not that hard to be great on defense in that division, but still, their offense is unbelievable. I love everything about it, and I, I think Buffalo goes and Kansas City and wins. Bob? Uh, I'm with the Chess. I uh... – I like the way the Bills played last week, and I think this is a great opportunity for Josh Allen to take 
kind of that next step and and get Mahomes out of the way and and win this game and, and carry on in the playoffs. Um, you know, I love the way they just stepped on Belichick's throat um, last week. They just kept pouring it on and pouring it on. No, I mean they. Well, I mean they did not hit touch the brakes at all. They just kept the gas they, on. They did what he's been doing to people forever to him. Exactly. So back to what I've said after every two games, right? You tease this thing. It, uh, you're getting more than a touchdown with Josh Allen. And I, I, I can't avoid that. So, um, but I still, I, I personally still think the bills go in and win this game as well. So, what one point might as well be a pick them too. I mean, what are we talking about here? When's the last time you saw an NFL game in 35, 34, right? Right yeah. now I see it at one and a half. How nice does plus eight and a half sound though? No shit. Plus no. eight and a half. That sounds real good. Yeah. yeah. P- put that in a teaser, Bob. I like where your head's at teasing that with, uh, with green Bay. I'm not going to do it because, uh, the Niners are my squad, which, uh, is, is with your heart, Bo. Fucking fan, guys, man. Oh man, you know, uh, yeah. Well, what can I say? I, I think, <laughs> I think, I think the Chiefs are, are too one dimensional on offense. They haven't been impressive uh, running the ball yet this year, uh, in my opinion. And I don't think they're good enough on defense. So um, I'm with you. I love the Bills. They're not good running the ball. They haven't looked good <laughs> running the ball all year. We just got done talking about Jarek McKinnon going for like 150 <laughs> fucking yards last week. What are you talking about? Okay, Jarek McKinnon is a nice addition. I just – I don't think their offensive line is going to be st- strong enough against this Bills defense to have any success running the ball. Fair. Fair? Okay. I mean, All right, Bob. Wrong, but okay. You think I'm wrong? Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see what happens. I-, I think that the Bills are better on both sides of the ball – um, and they're a better overall team than the Chiefs are. I definitely agree with you on that. All right, Bob, close us out in Tampa. The Bucks are a two-point favorite at home against the Rams. The over-under in this game is 48. Man, this is going to be another fun one, guys. Um, but this is such a hard game because it's so difficult to bet against Tom Brady as much as I think the Rams are the better team. Um, I've been saying it all year. I think they're the most talented team almost over a year ago when they made the trade. I was in Vegas. I put the money down for the Rams to win the Super Bowl once they got Stafford. So I got to keep rolling with this thing. Um, I can't uh, I can't touch it outright. But again, within the teaser, if I can get seven and a half, eight with the Rams on the road, I- I'll take it. Um, but he's still going up against the GOAT. I think it's going to be an awesome game. Um but I just, man, I don't know. I just have this feeling about the Rams and the way they're coming together and all the talent they have. Um, I, I still think they're the team to beat in this thing, um, but I don't have the balls to bet it out right. It's going to be in the – so I'm going to tease – listen, guys, I know, I'm know i going to tease all four of these things this weekend, right? So if I can get the Titans and some points, the Bills, the Bills in a touchdown, the Rams in a touchdown, and um, – who else was the other line on the other one? And and Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers with a pick them or a little bit of points at home. That's uh, that's the way I'm rolling this weekend. But the Rams are going to win this game. I just don't have the balls to put money on it. Money <laughs> line. You know, I, I it, it's hard for me to pick against Tom Brady just because I have eyeballs. Um, one of them, I know, but I got them. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> I got two of them. Uh, <laughs> look, man. The, the real kicker for this entire game for me is the health of the offensive line for Tampa Bay or lack thereof. My man Ryan Jensen's dealing with an ankle, and he had to leave the game last week. Ali Marpet, the other uh, pro bowlers, hurt. And Tristan Wirfs, their outstanding right tackle, is hurt. So I'm not saying they're all not going to play. They're going to play. But we just got talking about good players that are additions when they're playing Carolina and their targets when they're playing Aaron Donald, Floyd, and Von Miller. So – if there's three hurt offensive linemen for Tampa Bay and they're, they're starting, which is probably going to happen, and there's three healthy elite pass rushers and two of them are named Vaughn fucking Miller and Aaron fucking Donald, <laughs> I, it, it's in Tampa. There's no weather. Like, it, I just – I have a feeling that this is going to be one of those games where the defense kind of eats Tom Brady alive, and that's how you beat him is you hit him. So the only way to beat this guy is to get him off the spot and make him uncomfortable and get him yelling at his offensive line and his, and his backs. Uh, and 
you know, I think they're going to bracket Mike Evans and they'll give Gronk the middle of the field and let him have his eight or nine catches. But if you can stop Mike Evans in the wet red zone and then, you know, I don't know how you're going to block all these monsters from the Rams. My only thing with Stafford is 18 interceptions. In big games this year, he's forced it. And even in that last game against the Niners, he forced a lot of shit and it it cost him. So that's the only thing is if Stafford tries to go out and beat Tom Brady one-on-one, I'm taking Tom Brady. But if we're talking team versus team, I'm taking the Rams on the road. And, you know, I I think that I think you're going to get an NFC West NFC championship game, honestly, in SoFi with the Rams having the opportunity to go and host the Super Bowl in their home stadium, just like Tampa Bay did last year. So, uh, you know, we we talk about storylines on this show all the time, and the three of us talk about it constantly. And it was a great storyline last year, and I think it it would just benefit the NFLs in a very significant way if the Rams hosted a Super Bowl. That's all I'm saying. That fan base, I I live out here in L.A., and the Chargers and the Rams – have the weakest fan bases oh, in, the NFL, in the NFL by a lot. And the only way to change that, it's like, look at USC football, right? When USC is mediocre, that stadium is half full. When when they are the best in the land, the fucking the seats are filled. There's just too much going on out here. And the only way to uh, correct that is if the Rams win the Super Bowl. Uh, that I, I, I kind of started Obviously. buying in. I started buying into the Brady Belichick uh, bowl a little bit. Now that that's not a possibility, fucking bucks are out, dude. They're fucking, <laughs> they're, 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 they're fucking gone. I'm sorry. It's fucking, it's, 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 we're out of here, bro. <laughs> oh, uh, you are the best. <laughs> Fucking bust out of here, dude. <laughs> I'll say this: their defense looked looks good. Uh, the Rams, we we said it all year that at some point, all those pieces that the Rams added were going to finally start to gel. I think we saw it. Um, we've seen it the last couple of weeks. We saw it for a half against the 49ers. Cam Akers has returned to that backfield. They've got a very strong one-two punch uh, that they didn't haven't had all season running the ball. If this Rams team has a running game in this in the playoffs, they're going to be hard to stop. Um, I, I, Rams going through. Let's talk about Green Bay. Green Bay is it Green Bay? They don't have an owner, right? Isn't the, the Green Bay owned have, by the, the city of Green yeah, Bay? Well, they have like shares of stock essentially. Like fans can be owners of the team. Yeah, yeah. So when all the when all the NFL owners, like those who collectively own the NFL, are the NFL owners, right? When they're sitting in the in the meeting room, is there a representative there from Green Bay? Yeah, the it's isn't it still Ted Thompson? I, I can't I, Ted Thompson some, forever. I can't remember who it is now. Some guy but with he, a piece of cheese on his head. Yeah, he, <laughs> he, the C <laughs> the C something something of the Packers, and he makes the decisions as if he were the owner. It doesn't sound like that guy has. It doesn't sound like that guy's balls are probably as big as the other owners in the fucking league, does it? Well, no, but I think that the Packers, the Packers, you know, logo and the weight that that carries carries enough. And also, there that that's the one team that I guarantee you will never move ever. Yeah, no way. No, the the people in Wisconsin would start a civil war if the Packers left. No, cheeseheads against everyone. <laughs> All right, I like I, I like where you guys' heads are at, Bob. I might actually, well, we've I, I've got the Rams to win the Super Bowl as well, so it doesn't really and 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 it doesn't make sense for me to, unless I'm getting greedy. But what do we say? Hogs get slaughtered, right? So I could pl- press the Rams on a money line bet, but I've already got them to win the Super Bowl, so technically I already have them on the money line. So I'm probably gonna. I like where your heads at doing the teaser. Uh, I'm going to do a two-team teaser with Buffalo and uh, and the Rams in this one. I like it. I, I would I would put multiple touchdown scores on Devontae Adams and Cooper Cup. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the uh, ability to make plays like that yet, Chess. <laughs> we don't have access to FanDuel or, or DraftKings out here, so I got to go to Vegas. I got I got it. 
What's that? You still got a bookie? No, I, I, <laughs> I, I go to Vegas to make my plays. <laughs> Every weekend, baby. I'm at the sports book in Vegas. <laughs> I'm not in the land of fucking California communism quite yet. So I get the sports bet and smoke dope all at the same time. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Chez, great to have you back on the show today. Uh, hopefully our buffs can get a couple guys in the transfer portal because the Pac-12 South is starting to look incredibly stacked. And uh, That's a whole nother show, Bo. Oh, That's a whole nother show. Yeah, we don't have time for that one today, do no, we? Uh, no, well, not at all. Yes, tonight, uh, if you're in Denver, I actually did an interview today with Romy Bean about this exact situation. So it's real simple. You want good players? Show me the money, baby. That's what the that's what the kids want. Show them the money, and you'll get them. That's right. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time we have today. Please give <clears> us a follow <throat> at Armchair Donkeys to get our weekly plays in real time on our Instagram story, and hit that YouTube subscribe button for show updates. Good luck this weekend, boys. Love you guys, and um, we'll get this thing figured out with our with our squad one of these days, hopefully. 